Hey guys, welcome back. This video is about iPad mini 6 for those of you who are considering buying and you're like me, the public out there who wasn't able to get their hands on on earlier like those YouTube reviewers did or if you are lucky enough to pre-order and get your pre-order sent out early, I think this video should help a lot of you out there. Um, so right here I have iPad mini 6. Here I have um, Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 3, iPhone 13 Pro Max, iPad Pro 12.9 mini LED display. So Apple does excellent job when they do selling. They could sell you a broken down car and make you think it's a spaceship and you'll probably buy it. I'll probably buy it um, if I could afford it. <laughs> so when they introduced this ipad mini 6 i was blown away i was like i had to have it simply because i have um the mini 5 which i got as soon as it was released and i wanted it just because it was bigger than the phone but it was lacking a lot because the speakers were really bad watching movies it wasn't it wasn't enjoyable um, the battery wasn't the best. It's still an LCD display. Um, it was an LT. It's an LTE variant, so the LTE speeds weren't the best. Um, and, but now we have five G over here. I have five G over here. Five G over here. Five G over here. So obviously, we're looking towards a new technology. So when Apple introduced this, I was super excited and. and as soon as they said pre-orders today during the key uh, keynote, I was like, man, I'm pre-ordering. And I think I know why they did this. It was the best way to get people in to buy it as soon as possible versus iPhone 13 Pro Max was a pre-order several days after. And again, the YouTube reviewers got their hands on this device earlier and again, I think all those reviews kind of sounded fake. Not all of them, some were okay, but a lot of them sounded fake to me just because I think, I don't know if Apple is paying them. Hey, Apple, if you're watching, can you comment? Are you paying? Because a lot of them like, wow, this device is amazing. You must get it. You must. I mean, hands down, this is the best advertisement and the cheapest advertisement for Apple to do. I don't know if they're sending those devices free, most probably, because a lot of them said, hey, I got an iPad and the pencil for free. Um, so I'm assuming Apple is sending them out. And like I said, this is the best way to promote their product. Um, but I'm an average user like you guys are, and I do have a daytime job, so I don't have money rolling in for people. You know, I don't live off of this. So here we have iPad Mini 6, and you could already see where it's losing. And this is where, for me, was a big negative. As soon as I took it out of the box, it's an LCD display. I don't know if you could see it through your you know at your display what you see what i see um but there was a big i want to say it was a huge minus Let, let's just rate it um 10 out of 10 i will give iphone 13 pro max because it's an oled display it's bright the blacks are black the colors are punchy beautiful Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 3, I'll give 9 out of 10 simply just because it has a crease. And if you look for it, you could definitely find it. Um, iPad Pro 12.9 with the Mini LD, I'm just going to call it iPad Pro. I'll give it 8 out of 10. It's still an LCD technology. It's not an OLED technology. Yes, it's Mini LED. It's supposed to be close to what an, L um, what an OLED is. But it still gives you the ghosting, um, the halo that you get around the white words on the black background. So there's still a minus. I would give 6 out of 10 for Mini uh, 6. It's an LCD display. And where I found to be big minus is when I was watching a movie. Um, I have my TVs, um, LG, the OLED TV. So I'm looking at it, watching a movie and I was like, oh, 
beautiful. So then I was like, you know what? Let me use Mini 6 on Supportable on, on the go. And then I started watching the same movie on the Mini 6. Yes, the device is smaller, but the quality of an image wasn't as good as the OLED display. Then I compared it to the Mini LED and then I watched over here. And definitely there's a big minus where this display is losing. And I'm not even referring to hertz because this is 120 that's 120 that's 120 i believe that's 120 um the refresh and then this is 60 i'm not even looking at that this was never my must to me the display as far as the quality of an image was always a must next thing is a must for me is the sound and again there's a big downfall with the speakers and again those reviewers like great speakers I'll let you guys hear. Hopefully, you'll tell the difference. Um, so there's a big minus when it comes to this. So if you're one of those uh, individuals who's looking an all-around entertainment device to watch movie, play games, edit images, um, edit videos, and stuff like that, I don't think this is it. I think this is more designed for someone who's casual, on the go, you're taking trains, your buses, you're flying, you need something on the go to read something, browse internet, watch movies, something like that, or play a little game there, then this is good. I don't know if I should call it a budget device. Um, maybe it doesn't cost like it's a budget device. I think this iPad mini should be around $399, $429. $499 is a little bit pushing. Um, but then if you compare it to what's out there, I guess it makes sense, but then again, I still think the the price should have been three ninety nine. Um, let's talk about those bezels. They're not too bad. Um, I mean, when I looked at the when they first released, I was like, oh, those bezels. I mean, yes, Apple is claiming you could hold it better here. Barely any bezel. I have no problem holding it. So Apple, step up the game. This kind of looks. Like, I think when the Kindle first came out. Reminds me of an old device. Was it the Samsung that first came out? Kind of looks like those bezels. Anyway, so if you're one of those who is... You don't want to eat up the battery from your iPhone, you know, your phone. So you want to have a secondary device to read books. This is great. Um, I did take trains at some point. Kindle is fine, but Kindle is all laggy. And you want something that's more entertaining and you want to read the books, this is very comfortable. It's light. It definitely felt lighter than than um, the Mini 5. Because um, I think the weight is more even versus than on Mini 5. Uh, so let's just do a little comparison when it comes to display. Let me put those down. Let me pause this. By the way, all those videos were playing in 2K. Uh, 1440. I don't know if you can see it over there. 1440. Let me just turn this. And this is full brightness too. And uh, I wish you guys could see it. This is bright. This is washed out. And let me tell you, those 500 nits, um, if you're in a dark room, I think it's fine, but I mean dark room where there's no light. I mean, look at it right now. You could see how bright this. Yes, the display is bigger, but iPad Pro also goes a lot brighter than this. Same thing as the iPhone does. It's a lot brighter. Um, and so does um, Z Fold with the technology that they're using. It definitely pushes out colors out there too. So it's dark. So if you need something that you would be using on the go and you're going to be in bright places, you're going to be struggling. You need something that's a lot more stronger to put power out there. And it would be this device. But again, it's big. So if you're sitting in the, um, in the room where there's a lot of light, let me just increase the light over here so you can tell the difference. So if you look in the room, that's a lot of light. <laughs> they both... Obviously, this is going to push out a lot more quality image than this, but there are definitely going to be minuses. Let me lower the light. So what I want to show is technology when it comes to an LC. I'm not going to go over 
uh, what an iPad is. If you're getting into this, um, if you're coming for the first time into the iOS world, <sighs> welcome. I don't know if you've been in prison. <laughs> I don't know if you could call this prison. It's like one of those luxury hotels. Apple knows how to create their ecosystem and keep their customers in. I'm one of those. Um, my primary device is an iPhone. Um, and But I also love, I love, love, love to always, you know, dabble in the Android world just because of the freedom that it has. And going into the freedom this is also a very big minus when it comes to this like at least this is big and if you're doing multitasking you have more real estate to play with and this is smaller and it, i think it's going to be like an iphone type experience where you're going to be using one app at a time um but like i said i'm not going to cover an ipad so here's an image let me pull this one out here's the same image let me on this camera I'm sure you can see the difference let me pull exact same image on the iPhone there we go so if you are coming from the world of LCD not talking about this technology from if you have an iPad Air, if you have older generation of iPads, I don't think this will be a um, big deal. But if you're comparing, let's say if you have an iPhone and you're comparing it to something like this, or if you're coming from another OLED device, you're going to see a huge difference. And I think this speaks for itself. This is an LCD. This is not this year's technology. This is the last year's technology. <sighs> Going way back. I'm not talking about the technology as far as the chipset that they're having or the resolution that they're putting out there. I'm talking about the quality of an image that you're getting it. You got this type of LCD image on the previous iPads. I'm not talking about iPad mini, first one. That was just a... It was more of a tease, but when you looked at those images, that was a disaster. Anyway, so here's the blacks, here's no black. Here's the whites. There's The whites aren't as white as they are here. And that's where OLED and Mini LED is winning versus then LCD because they can give you true blacks and the whites aren't as white as they are here. Speaking of um, having a, of an... AMOLED display because AMOLED has each individual pixel giving out power. All of this is turned off and hence why the blacks are true blacks versus over here because even this is a big minus because if you're reading something or if something is moving, you could see the halo or you could see, like you could even see right here versus it's just, it's hard because it's bright. It's just an image, but if you're in person, you can see there's no halo versus there is a halo over here. Uh, there's definitely a halo there. Uh, so that's a big minus. Let's put this down. Uh, I want to look at the colors. Here are the colors. Colors on the grayish background kind of look washed out. Colors on the black background look more punchy. Now, if you zoom in on the image and you zoom in on this image, I think iPad mini 6 holds its own. It does give out nice image quality as far as when it comes to color. Um, it's punchy as here, but as soon as you move it to expose some black there, that's when it begins to lose the battle. So... I think if you're looking for basic use, this device is good. And I think that's what it was intended. It was intended on the go for basic use. If you're one of those who don't care about tech technology, you don't care about the latest, you're only looking for something that's convenient, you want 5G, you want portability, the battery's great on this device. So far, I haven't been disappointed as much as I've been disappointed with the iPad mini 5. So the battery is great in this. So if you're looking for those things, it's a go. 
wish it was cheaper, but for basic things, it's a go. If you're looking for more advanced things, it's a definitely no go. Because you're definitely going to get a better image quality on over here. Especially if you're editing something or if you're watching, if you are love horror movies, thrillers, or any of those movies that take place in the darker settings, it's going to be hard to see. And speaking of those, that 500 nits, dark, dark, dark. Not as bright as this. I tried um, looking at the video in, um, outside in the, during a sunny day. It was pretty difficult to look at details versus then when I was looking at my iPhone or when I was looking at the iPad. So if you're looking for something in a darker settings, train, buses, airplanes, this is good. It's light. It's also portable. Unfortunately, I didn't get my smart cover yet because I ordered from Best Buy. And even though Best Buy said, you know, today delivery, but somehow it's being delivered Tuesday, but whatever. It's not such a crazy thing. So basic, more advanced. Um, now let's talk. I want to talk about speakers because a lot of those reviewers were like bragging about speakers. For this, I could put the volume up because I don't want to get screwed for the copyright. All right. Here we go. To the fullest. And it's funny because I don't think they announced it. So if you, here's the volume. Whereas it's on this side. So if you bring it down you see, the volume goes down. But if you bring it up, there's a button I'm pressing up right now. See, if you press it up, it brings it up. But if you turn a device, not what was up becomes down. I don't think they really announced it, but pretty cool. So oh, let me go into the videos. And they also really need to work on customizing. Like, look at these borders. Look at these borders. And hopefully, um, Apple will, or I mean, developers will catch on to it. But here we go. Let me increase the volume again. Here we go. This is at the fullest. Let me just set up my iPad Pro so you can guys tell the difference. <laughs> Actually, I want it to be a surprise. The sound isn't as good as this at all. Let me play the iPhone. Let me move that away, so let me move it closer to this microphone so you guys can hear it. Okay. The quality is the same. The quality is the same. Okay, so this is 103. This is 43. I want the sound to be 102.
Like I said, this is at the highest. This is first, second. So if what you're hearing from there is what I'm hearing, and let me describe what I hear. I hear this is louder, I hear this is clearer, and it's punchier. So if you're you hearing this is more like, the sound is more in here versus here, this is what I'm hearing too. So if you're hearing the sound is kind of a little lost over there, that's what I'm hearing too. If you hear the volume is not as loud as the iPhone, that's what I'm hearing too. Let me not even go covering what the sound is on this one, because this one destroys the sound so like i said all those reviewers out there who claim oh the speakers are amazing they're not they're definitely better than the mini 5 but i think they're only a very small step up better um uh, apple said you need to hold it landscape to get stereo landscape but then again if you're holding it portrait you still hear both of the speakers working so I don't think that really makes a difference. I think they're both working all the time, same like the iPhone. But the speakers aren't good. So if you wanna watch movies, you wanna be in, again, like this is The Voice. What are we at? 152. Let me go here. 152. 152. Okay, here. Obviously, this is a bigger uh, device, so probably the speaker is a lot bigger than this. But if you're gonna, if you're planning to watch movie or whatever you're watching in crowded space, or if it's not quiet over there, it's not loud at all. Um, so if I have to rate the sound, let's say give ten out of ten for this one. Probably give 5 out of 10 for that one. And I'd definitely give 8 out of 10 for the iPhone. Um, I don't think it, if the Apple could tweak the sound. But I just feel like it needs to be more punchier. I think that it, the punch is what it's lacking. Um, I don't know if they need to... I, I, if they allowed us to fix like treble, for example. Where we could push the vocals out or the the mids should be higher the high should be higher the bass is okay as far as like you heard the bass is there it's okay uh, that's it I'm sure you hear the difference. And this is at the highest again. A 1080. 720. 1080. So the speakers 
are not great. So I don't know why those of you are saying the speakers are great. It's a big, big minus. Um, having a pen on a go, it's good. If you want to work on the small, small, small display versus big, where you have like a big canvas to work on. If you want to work on a small display, that's fine. I guess it's convenient, right? Um, uh, let me get rid of this. Uh, so, like I said, if you're looking for something small, if you want to open up, let me lower the brow, uh, the brightness. If you want to take the browse, you just want to look at the browsing stuff uh, on the go because your phone is just too small. So you need something smaller or if you have bad vision, so you need something bigger for your eyes. And like I said, if you look into the basic things, I think basic should be a key when it comes to this device. Um, I like the fact that they give you, um, like you get like um, a tablet version of YouTube versus what you get on the iPhone. Uh, I like that. So there's a lot of tablet that goes into it. But um, when it comes to multitasking, let me open this. Let me get this. Let me see if it allows. Nope. No split view. Okay. No split view there. Which they need to work on. They really do need to work on. Um... Let me see, we got my name there. Nothing personal, nothing personal. Can you open this? Let's see. Come on, no split view over here either. Anyway, they need to work on their multitasking and that's where I love when it comes to um, when it comes to using Android, there's a lot of freedom when it comes to uh, tweaking things and making things the way you want them to be. Um, I wonder if this allows. This does. Okay, so let's do multitasking here. Here we go. So if you're looking at, let's see, if you're looking at an iPhone. Let me open up the same website. Let me lower the brightness because this is at the brightest. No? Okay. It's not at the brightest. Let me make it brighter. And then you have this brightness. You could see the difference. I mean, it's probably too blinding for the camera to pick up. So let me open this. So if this is too small for you and need something bigger, you get something bigger there. So you get to use two screens at the same time. But like I said, they really need to work on multitasking. Tablets, we need to get more of a tablet and a computer had a baby, basically. We need something more in between. Um, so let's say I did say the battery is good. Battery is good. Using second generation pen is good. Charging is fast. Um, speaker sucks. Um, display, like I said, 6 out of 10. Uh, reading books, it's convenient. Um, where is it? I have this. So if you're looking, let's say, at reading text and stuff, it's pretty convenient. It's mostly, like I said, for basing things. Reading... Browsing internet, um, on the go watching YouTube videos, maybe movies, as long as you're in a dark room, playing light gaming, um, Call of Duty on the go, that's okay. Uh, if you want something that's more handy, like if I had to pick this between um, Nintendo Switch, I would definitely go for this just because the display is bigger. Nintendo Switch display is not the best. Um, but then again, if you want something more convenient with the hand, that's fine. 
it's it's it all depends on your needs i hope what i showed when it comes to like the display quality i hope you can see the difference where this is losing a lot but then again you're not paying over a thousand dollars you're paying five hundred dollars close to five hundred dollars you're not paying um this is the z fold 3 you're not paying close to two two thousand dollars you're not paying over a thousand dollars so you are paying what you're paying and you are getting for what you're paying so if you're expecting this to if you're expecting to get what those um popular reviewers out there are selling you're not getting that and that's what i'm trying to get across you're not getting that type of device that they're selling no it's not an amazing display no the speakers aren't great it's just average and i think this is where i want to keep this device as basic and average so if you're looking for basic things you're more than good to go with this device if you're looking for advanced things you have this um i'm not going to do any benchmarks because i've never done this i don't care about them so if you have any questions just ask below it is almost five o'clock in the morning and i'm sorry if i ramble too much uh, but I wanted to get this review out there because there's a lot of people who weren't able to get pre-orders just because it was selling out so quick or uh, like Best Buy screwed up with a lot of um, their pre-orders. My friends didn't get theirs delivered today. They're getting it delivered on Tuesday. So if you're one of those and you're still thinking if that's what you want to do or if you're still on the verge and you're having the Mini 5 and you're happy with Mini 5, You'll be thrilled with this one if you're happy with Mini 5. But if you're thinking of upgrading, hopefully those of you who are questioning about getting this device not hopefully did answer. If you're considering this or iPad Air, the latest generation, I don't know which one it is, fifth, fourth. Um, so just the latest one that came out last year. They're pretty much the same display technology uh, so is the ipad pro 11 the display technology is still an lcd um there's different chipset for sure uh, between all three of them um but i think they're so powerful enough nowadays so if you're not one of those working in graphic designs and things like that i'm just talking to an average consumer like i am i'm sure if you graphic design you probably already ordered this so if you're looking for type of technology then fine but if you're looking for best ipad display 12.9 is definitely beats all of them down i think it even beats down them probably going to get a lot of um talk for this one definitely um the mac computers uh, the macbooks ipad pro 12.9 with the mini led just has a beautiful display it's not as great as um the OLED, for sure, it's not as great as OLED. Um, I have it here, actually. Let me, sorry. Let me show you the difference between OLED and an LCD. I mean, an an OLED and an LCD, there's always going to be. And this is, I would say, my favorite de device all around is Samsung Galaxy Tablet S7 Plus 5G or Samsung Galaxy Tab S7 Plus 5G. The display on this, I think, beats them all. I think this is brighter. Generally, I think LCD is brighter than OLED, but they are definitely working magic nowadays. If they come up, if the um, iPad mini comes out with an OLED display, it's definitely hands down going to be the device to get. Um, hopefully, they'll do something with those speakers because I'm not thrilled. And I think that for me, that would be a problem. Because I want something that's loud. If you're watching movies, you want the punchiness of it. Hopefully, they'll do something with the software. Or maybe the next one will be better. iPad Mini 7. Uh, but that's about it. Let me stop rambling because it's 5 o'clock in the morning. And it's hard. I'm losing my thoughts sometimes. So if you have any questions, just post below. Hopefully, you enjoyed this video. 
Um, I'm probably going to do a video on the iPhone 13 Pro Max because I also have iPhone 12 Pro Max. But I think right now a lot of people are more interested in the Mini because it's the most talked about device from what I'm reading. Okay? Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Comment below. Bye.